that can free a man or woman from sin. Only the blood of Christ. Amen. Only the blood of Christ. No one else can. No one else has the power. So that, that takes man away from that and it moves God into it. But they interpret the scripture that way and they built the priesthood on that and they built the power that be on that. Okay, let's take... And, um, and then it also says that there will come a day of no more repentance. So, I mean, is that, is that for the, the Catholic Church or is that for everybody? There'll be a day of no more repentance. Well, yes, the Bible teaches that you do reach a point of no return if you continue in willful sin. Now, that, 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 remember I used the word willful sin. Um, there is sin, there's premeditated evil in the mind of man. There's premeditated sin in the mind of man, in the flesh of mankind. And if you continue in that, once you have known the truth of not to do that, you, you have the truth of God's word. The Holy Spirit has spoken with you. And then you deliberately premeditate, presumptuously continue in that sin over and over and over and over. I can't determine when God will say it's enough. Only God can. Amen. But he can and does in his word. He does sometimes draw a line and say, you know, uh, Korah, Dathan, and Abiram in the Old Testament rose up against Moses, and Moses said, if these men die the common death of men, then God, you're not with me because I am your spokesman. I'm the one leading Israel and, and if they can do this, uh, and they die just the common death of man, they live out their days and live the old and prosperous, then you're not with me. But he, uh, God said, no, I'll settle that issue. And uh, Moses said, choose you this day who's on the Lord's side. And uh, those that were on the Lord's side stepped over there with Moses, and then the earth opened up quickly. And the Bible said they went down quickly into the pit. <laughs> There was a cleavage of the earth, and they just followed them up, and and that was the end of the matter. So there is, uh, and by, and I'll say this, Bev, and then I'll move on back here, uh, and 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 then I'll come over here. But um, in, 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 when we go further in in uh, Hebrew six, which we're going to do, it deals with that the poem no return. It deals with no more repentance. But it qualifies it so that you see a sin uh, let me say it this way how do i mean to say it? god is more merciful than we are god does not cut off as quickly as we do god has more forgiveness than we do so god is ever merciful and you know in that i wish you could put can you push put the uh, tabernacle back on there real quickly um uh, okay there it is in that second compartment, uh, there is the Ark of the Covenant with the two golden cherubims made of one beaten piece of gold with their wings touching each other over what was called the mercy seat. And the mercy seat rested on top of the Ark of the Covenant. And it was overlaid of gold. And above it was the cherubims representing God the Father and the Son. That was what that was a picture of. The, the cherubims were a picture of the Father and the Son with their unity coming together over the mercy seat. And that's where the soul is taken in sin. Your soul and my soul is taken to the mercy seat. And there, over there's where the Father and the Son exercises mercy over you and me. <clears throat> forgiveness. Because that's where forgiveness comes from. What was it? First John 2 and 1. The, not the Gospel of John, but the Epistle of John. My little children. Verse 1. First John. Second chapter. My little children. These things I write unto you that you sin not. But if any man does sin. But if any man does sin. He has an advocate. And that word advocate goes back to the word barrister, our lawyer, our legal source. He has an advocate. 
with the Father, Jesus Christ, the righteous. So we have, we have a defense lawyer in Christ through his blood that pleads forgiveness for us before the Father. And he said, who is a perpetuation? That's a big word that we use, a perpetuation. That simply means atonement. Who is an atonement <laughs> for our sins, not only our sins, but the sins of the whole world. Amen. The sins of the whole world. Amen. Because he has, he has enough mercy and love and forgiveness. So the mercy is exercised before the judgment. Mercy rejoiceth against judgment. Uh, Carol. We've kind of gone past it, but back to what Barbara had asked before about what gives that group, makes them feel like they have the right to do that. Um, didn't, didn't they believe that Peter was the first pope? Thank you. <laughs> That's didn't they believe also that Peter Matthew, was the first pope? Matthew 16 also. Yeah, go ahead. I'm trying to get to your word. Okay. okay. Um, and that the... But really, there wasn't a pope until like 320 A.D., correct, at the Council of Nicaea? Right, right. So it's somehow they got it in their heads that they were in their doctrine really that there was a papacy that started with Peter mm -hmm. and went on from there, which really wasn't, wasn't true, I don't think. No. Um, no. And then also back to the, the, the scripture, I'm not sure where it is, but it says there's one God, one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. That takes their whole, that blows the whole thing out of the water right there. Right. Because they're, right. the word vicar, the Pope is a vicar of Christ, and the word vicar means instead of. Yes. And yes. if you put somebody instead of Christ, you're, you're kind of getting yourself into a little bit of deep water. You there. can't have a vicar in the place of Christ, can you? No. 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 Uh, First Timothy 2, so, uh, there's one God, and there's one mediator between God and man, the man, Christ Jesus. There is one God and one mediator. So you can't have that office of the priesthood there between you and God because there's one God and one mediator. The man, the man, Christ Jesus. Why does it say the man, Christ Jesus? Because he, he became my mediator on the cross while he was still a man. He was not an angel. He was the son of man on that cross. He was the Son of Man. He didn't become the glorified Son of God, reincarnated in the glory He had with His Father before the world was, mm -hmm. until He came down from that cross, mm -hmm. laid in that tomb for three days and three nights, and arose with His glorified body. But He was my mediator. He was that one man. The, Paul said one man. That's important you get that. He did not, he, he did not become my mediator when he became the glorified Son of God, he became my mediator as one man on that cross. There were three on the cross. There were three crosses. There were three men. Jesus was in the middle. He died for sin. The thief that railed upon him died in sin. The thief that asked forgiveness died to his sin. But the man Christ died for sin. He didn't die to sin because he didn't sin. He didn't die in sin because he had no sin. He died for sin. And that's where he is right now. So um, the one man, Sister Carol gave us that. Uh, now, uh, that, that's good. That, that's good. Sister Ethel, you had uh, something there. I was just going to say this in Matthew 16, 18, and 19, where he said that thou art Peter and upon the rock, and who do men say that I am? And he said that thou art Peter and upon this rock. And he said, I will give you the keys to the kingdom. Right, right. 16 through 18, 18 and 19. And 19. I will give you the keys of the kingdom. Margarita. But uh, when Peter said, uh, when Jesus asked, who do you think that I am? Right. And he said. Speaking of that, Mike, this is on. And he said, um, but whom say ye that I am? And Simon Peter answered and said, Thou art the Christ, the Son of the living God. And Jesus answered and said unto him, Blessed art thou, Simon Barjona, for flesh and blood hath not revealed it unto thee, but my Father which is in heaven. 